So I understand it's been a while since I've done a review. I've had a uh, busy last year. As you can tell, I haven't really posted a lot of videos, but today we're going to review something for my workbench that uh, I've wanted for a long time. And when the company that uh, sells these reached out to me, I couldn't turn the offer down. So what we're going to be looking at today is a uh, sort of helping hands device for soldering and assembling things on your electronics workbench. So let's talk about this monstrous base first. It's almost 10 inches wide by eight inches deep and is made out of five millimeter thick steel. Judging from the edge, there's a little bit of a angled kerf to it. So I'm just gonna assume it's either plasma cut or water jet cut. It could be laser cut, but I'm not sure. It feels a little too rough for laser. And over here on the front side right here, it feels like there might've been a pierce point there for the for the uh, plasma cutter or the water jet. I'm not sure yet. Um, but it's, it's very thick, very heavy duty steel. It features these black butyl rubber non-skid feet on the bottom and they come pre-affixed to it and they're stuck quite hard. I'm not sure what the actual color is. I'm gonna call it school bus yellow. It may look a little different on the camera feed but it's really close to school bus yellow. So let's move on and check out the other pieces. Also included in the pack are four of these alligator clip flexible arms. They're kind of set up the same way a microphone, a flexible microphone stand is set up. So they can move in any direction and they have this strong steel base with a neodymium magnet in the bottom. And these are highly flexible. They work really good for just standard PCB soldering. So this mount is designed for an, a second tool and I'll talk about that more in a minute. But the uh, if you didn't want to order the second tool that mounts onto this, you could always just order this for the extra space you have to hold your magnetic arms. And you could use these arms to hold your PCB that you're gonna solder. This is a proto stack proto board. So if I needed to, let's say, hold a wire here, and maybe a transistor here, then I could hold them in and solder just fine. So basically this is a version of the classical um, helping hands that you can get at any Radio Shack or electronics store in the world. And I think they even sell these at Harbor Freight Tools now, but these right here are kind of junky. I don't, I've never liked these. They're hard to like get a good grip on things if you're trying to hold something heavy with them and they're just no fun. So I'm probably gonna throw these away. This is like that, but on steroids. So these are quite strong. So I think they could hold a fair amount of weight. Even if you were trying to maybe hold up like a computer motherboard, I'm sure these would have enough, uh, enough strength for that. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about the real reason that I love this setup. So it's no secret that I like gadgets and a gadget that I've always wanted for my workshop or for my electronics workbench is a Panavice Junior. Now this is just a basic PCB vise that has a Panavice mount on the bottom. So I purchased one just for this because if you've noticed the hole here, it has these uh, little bolt holes here. That pattern matches perfectly to the bolt pattern on a Panavice. So let's go ahead and finish assembling all this and then we'll come back and talk more about everything else. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go through and read these little cards, see if there's any instructions. And there are some instructions and it's for these rubber discs right here. They feel like a maybe a urethane rubber. Um, they probably are a urethane rubber. They're a little harder than what I would expect from butyl rubber. These are for the bottoms of where the magnets are. These uh, edges are, they're broken. They were broken when they were cast or machined or whatever, but they're still a little sharp. And it says it will 
the card says it will scratch anything that it comes in contact with. So we're going to put one of these on each. Now that we have those, how do they stick? Oh, that's, before they were very grabby and they're still, I can pick up this plate and this plate weighs five pounds probably. I can pick it up on end with it. So they're very strong still. So we got those installed. It also comes with these little silicone rubber uh, covers to go on the alligator clips. I'm not gonna install those right now because I don't think I need them right now, but they're there if you're working with some delicate electronics, like say maybe you're gonna solder some, uh, some of the flexible like ribbon style stuff and you don't want the teeth of the alligator clips to punch through that thin membrane that separates the stuff, you would probably put these on and they would cushion the grip of the alligator clips there. So we'll put those aside, let's get the, the pan of ice installed. So, let's build this. Okay, so it comes with three bolts, three washers, and three nuts. Now, the top of the quad, or the top of the pan of ice, um, the bolt holes have been chamfered. So these fit as expected into those chamfers. So we'll get those three in there like that. We'll just take a little piece of blue tape, stick over each one. That way we can flip this in our hands, drop a washer on, drop a nut on, So, our quad hands is now assembled. Okay. So, what do you say we give it a little test? So, I'm going to go and grab one of our smaller ProtoStack development boards. And you'll see there's some rails in here. Let me give in, come in tight on that for you. Okay, so let's put in our PCB. So there we go. I'm just gonna get, make it a little tight. Now we can do some soldering. So now that our PCB is secure in the pan of ice mounted to the quad hands, workbench, we're going to take and add a couple resistors. And these are just to uh, you know, kind of test how it feels when you're soldering with this. Okay, so now that we're there, I'm going to take the board out. And you could just flip the pan of ice, but I like taking the board out, flipping it over. And obviously you couldn't do this every time. There we go. Okay, so we're heating our soldering iron up while it gets hot. I'm just gonna play around with these arms and we'll see if we can use this to keep the resistors pulled tight to the PCB. I think we can. It's not really that big of a deal with resistors, but we're gonna try it anyway. Okay. So our, 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 Soldering iron is up to temperature. I'm gonna clean off 
our iron and we're gonna just solder this up really quick There we go. Four solder connections made. It holds very nicely. It's a lot better than the uh, cheaper style of helping hands. This is the way to go. So what's my final conclusion? Well, I really like how the powder coat on this is really thick. It feels like glass. And based on the measurements and what I think the steel is, I assume the powder coat's about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half thick on each side. Um, the edges, this has obviously been either laser cut or water jet cut, and the edges are really smooth and they've been broken. Um, that's nice because there's no uh, sharp edges to cut through the to cut through the powder coat. And even if it, if it was plasma cut, I would expect there to be more of a rough edge. So it was either water jet or laser. It might have been, maybe there's a pierce mark right there. Uh, it feels kind of like a pierce mark. This might have been plasma cut. But either way, it feels really good. Um, I like how heavy it is. The thick butyl rubber feet are nice. Um, the magnets and the bases of these arms are super strong. They're the real deal. And even the flexible arms are really nice. You know, I would expect, at least in my experience, these arms are really stiff and they're they're usually not really well suited for this task. But these are these are very flexible. So. The manufacturer really paid attention to detail and picked out, you know, something nice. And I mean, they're powder coated as well, so that's cool. Um, it does look like if you wore these out, they're replaceable. I do know that they sell um, a magnifying glass version of this separately. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm completely happy with it. it. It seems like it's a really nice addition to my, my workbench and my workshop. And I'm sure you're going to see it in a ton of videos, so stay tuned for that. If you would like to purchase one of these for yourself, I have some Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. If you don't know what that means, it means that Amazon pays me a commission for every one that I sell. It's only a couple bucks, and as all you know, it goes to help keep the lights on and help me do more videos like this and provide other content that you guys know and love. So. If you want one, check those links out. And if you buy one, let me know. I would love to hear how it worked out for you. So that's gonna wrap up things for today. I wanna to thank everyone for watching and there's gonna be some more videos coming out here in the coming weeks. And as always, hack the world and make awesome.